Hello everybody, it's the City Mad Haven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Tier 10 Russian Tank Destroyer, the Su-152 Turan. Now, I'm looking at the statistics of this vehicle and all the base statistics. Um, to me, this vehicle kind of seems like it is going to be overperforming a lot, especially with the few matches I put in it today. Uh, yeah, this thing is going to be overperforming a lot and it's just wrong brought into the game a little bit too strong sure it's got no armor uh we have no armor viewer however to look at except for in game so let's go ahead and jump into some uh statistics here so as you guys can see right here you know just it's a tank okay so far the matches i played in this a, a little they're up there they are definitely up there um my first couple matches weren't exactly the greatest but then as i started to learn the tank and get used to it um that's whenever weird things started to happen okay but starting off we got 303 standard pin we got 309 premium pin and then we have 90 millimeters of high explosive pin keep in mind your standards they are ap rounds your premium is a heat round i prefer heat over apcr any day just because you're actually able to hit the target and go through rather than you know, you hit and they can still bounce. Uh, 90 millimeters of high explosive. Also, along with that, they are monstrous rounds. Uh, speaking of which, your standard rounds travel at 960 meters a second. Your premium rounds travel at 760 meters a second. And your high explosives also travel at 760 meters a second. Um, along with that, this tank is also carrying a hefty load on damage. 950, which this is where the cheeky stuff is going to come from. You can essentially out-trade anyone in the game. Guaranteed 4,000 damage a match if you pull out against single targets. Let them shoot you, you shoot them. You're guaranteed 4k almost every single game, along with 1,850 hit points. Loading high explosives, high explosives against this though is probably going to be the best way to do it. Just because you have no armor. Uh, max speed is 63, along with the max speed. Uh, your power to weight at 17.73, you will be achieving that max speed extremely often. Um, vision range, I have mentioned this, I mentioned this in the last video. Um, tank destroyers with this high view range, they're able to self-spot along with that. Tank destroyers have an advantage with concealment. This thing's concealment at 0.3, keep in mind, that's actually fantastic. To give you guys an idea, the Agula, um, the Agel, the Hawk 30, the um, German Tier 8 light tank. It's still concealment is 0.27. So this thing is absolutely phenomenal with still concealment. So jumping down, let's take a look at the rounds per minute. We got 3.26 rounds per minute. If you're going to be combining that with a few perks, you'll be able to get 4.2 rounds a minute instead. Um, reload time, 18.4 seconds. Aim time, 2.7. Honestly, 2.7 aim time is not going to be too bad. Um, you can run enhanced gun lane drive if you want. But that's, you know, like if, if you feel like you're going to be needing it, use it the accuracy on this vehicle on the other hand at 0.37 it, it's not the greatest but it's not the worst it's actually dead center in my opinion of perfect accuracy for like what feels comfortable and basically what you can play around with the most um whenever you uh put accuracy perks on this i believe i'm only running one perk and i got it done to 0.33 so it's not too bad uh the biggest drawback to your gun entirely is the aim time but the aim time is still good but if we got to find a drawback it's the aim time Five degrees of gun depression. You're not going to be working a ridge line. Then again, you don't want to get close inside this tank unless you really have to and you got to play aggressive. Um, 15 degrees of elevation as well. So you're not going to have too much of a problem aiming up above you. Uh, other than that, here, here, here we go. There's the armor. We got 30, 15, and 10. You're going to be getting overmatched, period, by any caliber of gun in tier 10 or even in tier 8. Um, I don't know how many tier 8s there are of 75 millimeters, but that's the only gun that's going to be bouncing off you. Uh, tra traverse speed of the turret at 26 degrees. I'm actually wondering right now if that is something I saw twice or once. Turret rotation 28.4. I am buffing it somehow. I don't know how. Um, view range 390. Already went over that. Engine power. I love how they have view range here, and then they also have view range there. Um, engine power, well then again, if you have uh, upgradable guns, you can swap it out and then take a look at it from there, or upgradable turrets. Engine power, 480, we already went over the top speed and the power to weight. Uh, reverse speed in this tank, however, at 18. I can say this, that 18 reverse speed, 
has been a lifesaver for me multiple times already in just maybe the 10 matches I've played inside this tank. Fire chance at 12%. I love the fact that this is a 12% rather than 20 because you have such light armor and your engine's up in the front. It's going to make this thing really hard to set on fire unless you know exactly where you're aiming. Traverse speed of the tracks, on the other hand, at 34 degrees. It's not too bad. Um, a drawback of the tank is actually its terrain resistance. So if you guys want a recommendation, off-road driving would be really good to take with this along with born leader. And maybe even improved ventilation. But I actually dropped the improved ventilation for a camouflage net. Signal range at 720. That is primarily for assist damage and communication with teammates that are farther ahead of you. That way you know that the target is in front. Um, you know, this tank, there is a lot of things about it that just kind of blow my mind. Uh, one of them being the fact that we literally have no armor. We got four millimeters on our little bit of a pike plate right there coming up. It's a little like wind guard or mud guard. Underneath the tank, six millimeters. Uh, you got spaced armor on the side as well, but really the spaced armor is not going to be providing a whole lot of protection. Uh, no armor. It doesn't matter where they fire at you, they will penetrate, unless they're shooting heat rounds. If they're shooting heat rounds, you can achieve an auto ricochet angle at 85 degrees or more to bounce that round. Um, 50 millimeter gun, not too bad. You could probably absorb a few shots. And then this. I don't know why the log's in the armor viewer at 220, but there's a log here for 220. All your armor is on a log. So I, I can't help but giggle at that. I think it's kind of funny. You know, someone pulls up behind you. I'm going to put a high explosive in you. Shoots the log. What? <laughs> Sorry, but that, that's just. But, like you guys can probably tell that's that's how I am. I have a little bit of an adrenaline rush right now. Um, the two matches I'm gonna be showing you guys literally just happened back to back. And um, yeah, I can definitely say this thing is intense. Um, just looking at this res of right now, view range of 499, not even using optics, 237 still concealment. We're gonna take a look at the crew. I actually transferred over a medium crew to this. That's a concealment medium crew. So running born leader, rapid loading, camouflage expertise, along with that silent driving, situational awareness, six sense, muffled shot, track mechanic, and steady aim. So we only have one perk bolstering our accuracy. Um, yeah. So far, uh, cons to the tank, it is extremely lightly armored. Uh, what is going on here? Loadout, okay. So we're running with optics, advanced loader, and advanced concealment. And the fourth equipment slot, well, that doesn't exist, in my opinion, because that is literally something that is a game feature that decided to say, hey, we're going to remove this as a game feature and make it a piece of equipment. So up first, we're going to be looking at vineyards. Now, for those of you who don't know the gun on this vehicle, it is not your standard 152 millimeter. It is actually 150.4, 152.4, which means that this gun is actually capable of overmatching 50.8 millimeter plates. So if you're struggling to go up against conquerors, um, super conks, this gun can actually overmatch that top plate on top of their forehead. So if you guys are looking for a new tank that's going to be really reliable and overmatching, this is definitely going to be one of them. Now, talking about the cons, um, I don't really feel like there's a whole lot of cons other than the fact that you have no armor whatsoever. You have a gun that is capable of trading 13.7 second reload with the loadout that I'm currently using with the 9 perk crew. Um, if you're going to be using a 4 perk crew, I would recommend Camouflage Expertise, Sixth Sense, Track Mechanic, and Situational Awareness to get you started with um, your base 4 perks, which is the average. So, this tank, so far, um, I am a little bit upset about it, that the fact that they added it into the game, this is not a World War II vehicle in the slightest. And you're going to be seeing this thing have really good win rates just because of how much it's going to cost to buy this. 23,000 gold is no slouch whenever you look at it. This thing is absolutely expensive. Scratch that. 23,950. So this thing is definitely really, really highly priced. 
it's going to be a collector's vehicle. Um, cons to it, it's definitely the fact that this thing costs so much. Um, however, every single match that I've played inside this tank, I have made nothing but silver. The ammunition inside this, your standard rounds cost 1,650, uh, your premiums cost 5,200, your high explosives cost uh, 1,600. So if you're looking to be making silver inside this thing, as long as you're not relying on premium ammunition and you're just firing up the standards, you're going to be making an average of 120,000 to 60,000 a game. Um, unless you get some really good outstanding performance matches, those matches you're going to be seeing in the range of 200,000 to 250,000 silver per game. So it's this this tank definitely has a really high skill cap in all honesty. And um, I actually want to check out the statistics of this vehicle coming here in about a week or two to check and see how it's performing because this it's it's never even been tested on PC before and I, I don't even know if the super tester tested this out or not because I never asked about it um, other than that starting to talk about the pros of the tank you got a really big gun you got a really fast reload uh, honestly, the damage this thing does for the reload that it has, it's a little bit too fast. If you compare it to, let's say, the Death Star or the 4005, my question for you guys is, how often are you firing Hesh out of those tanks anymore? I actually rarely fire Hesh out of my 4005. Uh, more than likely, I'm firing standards, and that takes 22 seconds to reload. Right here, are going to be taking a little bit of a risky play, but with the high explosives that do 1,200 damage inside this, they are definitely some hard hitting rounds without a doubt and right there taking a hit from a strum tiger and from a udez you know this is pretty early game um right now i'm gonna want to take it really slow now right here look at the um circle around the map very very high concealment 237 this thing has got an advantage from all hell you can literally just sit in one spot never be seen lucky for me there my shell actually whiffed a little bit to the right landed on the uh, amx 65 ton but I can definitely see where this thing's going to be appealing. Um, it reminds me of a Scorpion G and an SU-130 PM. Uh, but those tanks, those tanks have been in the game for a really long time. But they're probably the only tanks I can really compare it to. Uh, this is just a tier 10 variant of the SU-130 PM with a little bit of the uh, benefits from a Scorpion G, but the concealment rating from the SU-130 with a massive gun with 950 alpha. I don't know what made them think 950 was a good number to put on this tank, but the fact is most mediums you're going to be able to shut down very quickly. This thing is going to be an absolute killer on the field. And if you don't know where they are, they are going to be very hard to take down. You're going to need to try and rely on high view range and just maybe some luck trying to get some blind fires to take these down. Or maybe if you have a Suicide Scout light tank that's going to be pushing him to try it, that could be a, a good call too. But, so far, these two matches I've played inside this tank, these uh, two final matches that i played inside this tank, I am just blown away by how consistent this vehicle can be. Even on close quarters engagements, long range engagements, honestly, I don't recommend trying to get close quarters just because of the fact that this is a lightly armored tank, 15 millimeters of side armor. You will find yourself struggling quite a bit. Um, you are able to high roll for over 1,164 inside this tank as well, which by that point, the Death Star just is getting left in the dust by this tank. Now, I mean, it's just as lightly armored as a Death Star. It does 1,200 damage with its high explosives if you can penetrate them with their 90 millimeter. And it, I, I seriously, I don't see any cons to this tank. I don't. The only cons I see to this tank is the fact that it costs an absolute outstanding amount right now. And since they're charging gold for it, they can't rebalance it. Um, that is a big problem that they do every single time. If they debuff this tank, people are allowed to call in to get a refund. Because uh, coming up pretty soon, I don't like how they add tanks like this into the game that are costing gold right away. Because it means if they debuff it, I can now call in and get a refund. So, they should be adding these tanks for free XP to begin with. 
That way they're, they are able to rebalance them according. But since they cost gold, we're not we're probably not going to be seeing this thing get debuffed at all. So, because a lot of people are going to be buying this based upon reviewers like me. They're going to be going over it and saying, Hey, this thing is amazing in so many ways. There are very little flaws to the tank. Um, along with that, the 1200 damage on the high explosives. Uh, you guys are going to be seeing this match, how much I'm actually going to rely on those four high explosives. More than likely, I'm going to be throwing in a couple more of them, just because 1200 damage. If the enemy's on 300 hit points, it's basically a guaranteed kill, no matter what. Even if the enemy's on 400 hit points, it's almost a guaranteed kill every single time. So there is that. And, yeah, just absolutely outstanding vehicle. That is supposed to be in Cold War, but is now in World War II. Um, this is not a happy review, by the way. I'm a little bit upset about this, but at the same time, it is pretty cool that they added it, not gonna lie. Uh, but the tank itself was made, you know, whenever you look at the description of it, it's talking about 1965. And that's a little bit more modern than anything else. There we go, 948, and set the 705 on fire. So, knowing that he's low health, we're gonna be loading in the high explosive round. And taking it a little bit slow here. Take some time to aim the shot. And there we go. High explosive on top of the 705A taking him down. Now, spoiler alert. I hate to do this. But the rest of this replay is just a very, very long time of me driving around. I decided to, um, after my... Uh, Udez died around B2. I decided to sit right here thinking that the uh, Udez 1516 on the enemy team was going to try and push up behind me. Instead, he went to go jump on the cap. And me, thinking that I'm going to be perfectly fine, decided to drive forward. I should have dropped down left right there, in all honesty. But I have come right here multiple times, and I have dropped off this cliff multiple times and survived. Not this time. I guess whenever a tank weighs absolutely nothing and only requires 480 horsepower to move, that um, it takes more fall damage. But then again, I was low health. I should have thought it through before I made that uh, decision to try and drive off that cliff. I, I made a little bit of a mistake, which did cost us the match, and I'm a little bit sad about that. But stuff happens. We're human. Now, 7,907 damage, 12 direct hits, 1,257 assisted, a mastery badge high caliber, and just an absolutely outstanding match inside this tank. Um, up next, we're going to be taking a look at Lakeville. Uh, Lakeville, I love the fact that they added this map back. Uh, there is a few things I would like to see different about it, but currently I would say it is pretty balanced, other than the fact that artillery is able to get really close and land AP shells consistently. Uh, artillery, nerf, please. They hurt so much. And people who argue against me with it about it, I will actually sit down and probably make an entire video about it because I've been playing artillery the past couple of days as well and getting a few videos. And I also have just as outrageous matches in artillery in a very short amount of time as I've had with this tank as well. So whenever you put artillery in the hands of a good player, someone who likes to get up and be a little bit aggressive, I know that right now I'm actually struggling a little bit to get back into the game. Uh, but these matches, I, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm starting to get back into the game very well. And changing up my habits a little bit. It's really good to take a break and then come back to try something new. Uh, these trees right here, uh, Blade is going to hit this tree backwards. He actually freaked out that he did because you want to knock that one down forward. If you knock that one down forward, you can actually back up over here, which I'm actually going to be showcasing here in a split sec. And you're able to basically just back up and aim through it. Right off the bat, 844 damage. It's not even 40 seconds into the match, and I'm already 844 up. Um, since the gun is 152.4, you can overmatch the top armor of the 50 TP as well. Speaking of which, I'm actually going to double check that real fast, which is Poland, not Tank Destroyer. And on top of the 50 TP, we are looking at armor that is 50 millimeters yeah you can overmatch the entire forehead of that uh, 50 tp which sadly i wasn't able to just because he backed off a little bit and got that gun depression on us um 
right here, you know, finally looking at the map and seeing that no one went right. Not a single soul went right. Uh, we have a couple of guys just aiming down there, sniping. The back of our team is over here just aiming down, kind of going crazy. Um, right here, I'm thinking to myself, you know, there's four minutes left on the clock. I got to get as aggressive as I can get. You know, I've got 1,850 hit points. I got a big gun. I'm loading in the heat rounds. And, you know, planning ahead of time for what you want to fire is a really good thing to do. So I'm pretty much just paying attention to what spotted heat rounds. The chisel, it died, so I'm going to leave the heat round loaded. Because if I'm going to be going up against the chisel, I would rather be firing standards. And immediately I see the 4005, so I'm going to be switching over to HE. Now that he's down the 914, I'm already loading an HE. There's really no point to change it. And just going to hold off, hold off, hold off. Can we get the shot? Yes, we can. 360 damage sent down to the Boras, taking him out. So, this match was immediately after the last match you guys also just saw. And so far, I've put a, either in the range of 10 to 12 matches inside this tank today alone. I've only been playing for about two hours since I logged on, and it is just outrageous what this thing is capable of. I was so surprised, because the first few matches, they weren't as impressive, and then as time started to go on, I started to get a little bit comfortable with it. I started to play it like I do my um, Scorpion G, a little bit aggressive, taking it slow, slowing down waiting for my gun to aim in and then firing right then and there. That it was probably the best way to play this. Uh, it is definitely a sniper. You don't want to get close. I've mentioned that before already. I'm just basically a, a, like a broken record by now. Um, as I'm a broken record, I'm actually looking for it inside my stats in game because I don't know how many matches I've put inside this thing yet. Apparently I can't find it. I'm blind. If I somehow put... Okay, there we go. I've only put eight matches inside the SU-152 terrain. So, coming here to the city, there is 42 seconds on the clock. Um, one enemy did jump off the base, which honestly, he should have stayed on the base. We're right up to 3,663 damage dealt. And this map is way too bright, in my opinion. I can barely see my damage on the top right. Gotta try and keep it covered. Now... The concealment on this tank and the advantages to it running muffled shot, which is something I well recommend that you run on this tank. Um, this is going to be the best showcase right here of the concealment of this vehicle. There's one tree in front of me. I did not get spotted the entire time I was right there. I was able to get a f basically a free shot into the enemy right there just because of one tree that's knocked over. So I know that I can basically back up right here safely and not worry about it. Uh, it's down to 6 to 6 at 4,645 damage. There's artillery. We're just going to back up a tad bit, try and guarantee that kill. There we go. And with the 950 Alpha, you know, it's if, if you feel like there's something you can shoot at that's in the range of 700, 800 hit points, it is very strange to know how comfortable it is knowing that I can fire at something with that much hit points and essentially guarantee the kill. Um, even tanks that are like 900 hit points overall, it's essentially like a 70% chance to kill them outright with 900 HP. A 50-50 chance to kill somebody outright at 950 HP. So, in my opinion, this is a little bit too much. It's extremely high. Uh, right there, they're going to be putting a standard round through the top plate of the Panzer 7. Now, thinking about it, what do I want to do? I want to get unspotted. So we're going to wait a second. Go ahead and get unspotted. There we go. We're going to go ahead and pull up here. You guys are going to see something that I kind of just thought about doing. I wanted to see if these guys would get spotted again and then basically pull out something heavily aggressive. But here you go. How you doing, Panzer 7? Oh, you're dead? So sorry. We're going to go ahead and back off. But with the reload that this thing offers, you are just able to reload so quick that it is just insane with the alpha that it has. You know, and then being able to get a really cheeky shot right there in between the little bit of an archway in the corner of the building. But primarily, this, in my opinion, is probably one of the strongest tank destroyers I have played in this game in a very long time. 
um, the 268 version 5 with the armor that it has, the gun that it has, the reload that it offers, that is just another insane vehicle that it, it, it stands just as high as this, if not higher. But this thing, adding it in like this, giving it that top speed, sadly wasn't able to get the kill with that even though we don't weigh a whole lot. And uh, M48, you know, seven hit points left. I'm okay with that though. However, this is actually the most damage I've ever done in game. This SU-152 Turan, within the two hours I have played the tank, broke my lifetime damage record of 9,142 on the 60 TP within eight matches of playing it. So, I, I don't really know where I stand in this vehicle. And as I said, 250,000 silver earned that match as well. I didn't fire off a whole lot of um, premium either. Mastery badge, top gun, and a defender medal. So, I don't really know what to jump into and talk about with this tank. Other than the fact that I don't think anyone was ready to have this added to the game the way that it is. It is absolutely outstanding, and I hope that the matches that I just showed off today... Uh, the review of the tank, we don't have an armor model to look at. Not like it matters, you're just going to get overmatched when something hits you to begin with. But this is one of the most powerful tanks in the game now. It's essentially a Grill 15 with a bigger gun, better overmatch, better top speed, better power to weight, less gun depression, but gun depression doesn't matter, and still concealment that's comparable to a light tank, along with view range comparable to a heavy tank or even a light tank. Some light tanks have a 390 base view range. So the concealment it offers, muffled shot, this thing is going to be breaking matchmaking for quite some time, and it's going to make the Tier 8s a little bit more one-sided inside the matchmaking as well. If you're a Tier 8 and you're going to be placed up against one of these, or even against three of these, you are going to find yourself lacking and falling behind heavily. Um, other than that, you guys... I don't know what else to say about this. This is a tank that's going to be absolutely broken inside the matchmaking. Um, I can say this, though. Anyone who's on Xbox and you guys are looking to get your hands on this tank, I'm willing to give it away. Just make sure that you add me in-game and uh, comment down in the comment section. Drop me a story. I want to hear something about a match you've played recently that you really had a high hopes inside of. And leave a gamer tag at the very bottom. I'm going to go through and read a couple of those. The giveaway will more than likely be given out in two days. I will select one random person to give the tank to. Other than that, you guys have a fantastic day, night, afternoon, whatever time it is for you. And I can officially say this tank feels broken. And yeah, you guys are missing out if you don't have it. This is definitely going to be one of the top tier tanks in the game. Because the fact is, it outmatches the Grill 15. It outmatches the 4005. And it makes basically any lightly armored tank destroyer feel useless compared to it because of its alpha the trade for trade factor it's way too high inside this tank and if you run into a lightly armored tank you have 1200 damage on your high explosives you're going to be ruining their day other than that i'm out of here i'm just a little bit worried about this thing being flooded inside matchmaking surprisingly enough i have not seen one of these on the enemy team yet maybe no one's buying it because they don't think it's a good tank i'm telling you now it's broken it is absolutely broken. So, you guys, yeah, I'm out of here. This sucks that they did this. Uh, there's no praise here. There's only criticism now. So, that's kind of where I've been at the past few weeks with the Wargaming devs because this was not ready to be added to the game. But they added it. Yay. I'm going to go do a couple more 8,000 damage matches and then go to work.